Hi Yarn Lovers, it's Gary and I'm in my living room coming to you from Vancouver, Canada. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Today is Wednesday, February the 19th, 2020 and <laughs> this is video 33. I must apologise up front that if you see me grimace or uh, take a moment and catch my breath, it's because yesterday I was moving furniture and I tweaked my back somehow. Well, it was a lot worse yesterday than it is today. I'm recovering and I feel a hell of a lot better than I did yesterday. So uh, I was taking some photographs and I needed to move some furniture out of the way. So I'm going to insert photographic um, items into this video to showcase my uh, finished works. And I want to say thank you to the subscribers who have just joined me recently and to those who have been around since day one and for a while. Thank you and welcome back. Uh, I love getting your comments so please continue commenting and uh, answering my questions. I hit a lot of bumps on, on my journey so uh, when I talk about these issues with you I really love your input as well. So thank you, thank you for that. If you are just new to this channel and uh, are thinking uh, what I set this channel up for, it's me and my journey and looking at all of the knit and crochet projects that I work on. I talk about yarn acquisitions and tools in my craft as well, like what, what I, where I get them and how they work up, all that sort of yarny goodness stuff. So without further ado, I'm going to insert photographs of my first finished item which was a blanket I started about three weeks ago into uh, into this video so here they are, here are the photos of that blanket finished so what did you think? I absolutely love the finished item. I did not think that it would be possible that I would have enough patience with it, that I wouldn't be able to get through all of the paneling that I had uh, created, all of the stitch work. I look at that project now and I think, wow, I must have been hypnotized or in some sort of trance when I was working on it because I was um, a lot of hours were, was put into that uh, blanket because yeah. I got to a point where I had to rip it all back as well. So I finished that blanket twice. But let me show you the blanket and I'll tell you the story of the blanket. So this is what we have. The longer side is six and a half feet and the shorter side length is four and a half feet. So when I hold it this way, it covers my full body from my neck all the way down to my feet. So that's a bonus to be fully covered with this blanket. If I hold it uh, horizontally like this way, it wraps around me nicely as well. If I want to kind of like, you know, shield and walk around with, uh, with the blanket on me in the house if I'm feeling a little chill. So it's kind of like a little bit of a puncher uh, type blanket or a wrap I should say it's a little wrap blanket and the stitch work okay let's talk about that so granny stitch for 20 rows then I move into what I call the six clustered row repeat so I use uh, I created a, a pattern I guess in my head that I use six different rows so six different stitches so it's a combination of a row of uh, single stitch uh, a single crochet sorry a row of uh, a couple of rows of double crochet and seed stitch so they go through a different formula than that than what I've just described but the six clustered is what I call it the six clustered row and I do four in this foundation teal color and then the fifth cluster I do color work and then I change into this yarn here which is an ultramarine blue and I do uh, another uh, four sets of the sixth cluster and then I do the fifth step being the color work 
and so on and so forth. I change it to the teal, I do my four clusters of six rows and then I do the colour work and then change it to the teal. And then I end it with the granny square, sorry it's not a granny square, the granny stitch rows. So <clears throat> love it, love it, love it. It turned out so squishy and comfortable and it just drapes so lovely. I was going to put things on this blanket, little pockets to like put your remote control in. That was going to be my little secret surprise on the blanket. But when I stitched everything, like I stitched one pocket on to see how it would stand up, it was way too heavy for this particular fabric. And there was uh, a drag on it that was like almost pulling all the stitches apart. So it was way, way too uh, bouncy of a fabric to attach things onto. So I took them off, I took off that pocket and I thought I'm just gonna keep it as a blanket because I absolutely love it. And the way that the colors are arranged like this, like the paneling, I think this would work fantastic for like if you had a special sports team that you uh, you know that you cheered on or that was your team or if you had college colors and I think it would look great as a Hogwarts house as well like if you had different like I think the uh, the red and gold was one house and then you had like a, a, bl a dark blue and a, I think it's gray I'm not too sure what that um, that house is but it would be beautiful like a uh, commemorative blanket to celebrate your team, your college, your house. So yeah, um, a little bit about the woe. So I had a woe with this uh, blanket. I was, as I said, I almost finished this blanket twice because as I was crocheting along, I was watching television, I didn't really want to have to count stitches because it was the same length all the way through. I completed one row of doing whatever like double crochet or one row of single crochet or one row of like the seed stitch and it was never going to be decreasing or increasing so I didn't really think I needed to count. So I got to five feet of this blanket and I was folding it up thinking why is this not um, square? It's like getting narrower to the top where I'm crocheting. So I spent like an hour counting my rows from the beginning of the blanket to where I was currently and there were 20 stitches missing. I was like confounded. I didn't know what happened. <laughs> it was like, but I, I haven't purposely like, um, you know, wanting to decrease, but it happened so gradually as well that you know, when I was a lot shorter, I was folding it up and I didn't realize that it was getting narrower, but five feet of it and then realizing, wow, there is a big difference on either side of the blanket. There was a couple of inches gone. I was like, hmm, what am I going to do? Am I going to rip it back uh, and do it again? Am I going to rip it back and scrap the whole idea of the blanket? Am I going to uh, try and live with it and just sort of maybe pull out the narrower part as best as I can? But it's 100% acrylic, so it's it, it's just going to spring back. So, okay, I was a trooper. I said, I'll pull it back, I'll think about it, and then I'll go ahead and make a decision. So I pulled it back and spent two hours pulling back, getting all these balls kind of like together all of the color work came out there were little balls like this and uh, I thought okay do I want to research to see what happened uh, do I want to uh, just be more conscientious perhaps maybe something that um, I need to count every stitch in every row as I complete it to see what happened so I mean I got an idea of where the stitches went missing and it was the double crochet rows they they were the culprit so i thought to myself okay let's let's consider um adding a stitch back in every time i did a double crochet row and that seemed to balance up my second attempt and i don't fully understand what had happened with the 
double crochet rows, but I have an idea that when I was doing my chain up from the row below and I was beginning my double crochet to work back again, uh, in, the, in that double crochet row, I chained up two and then I double crocheted into the next stitch. And when I was coming back on top of those rows and counted them up, there was one double crochet missing. So I think that's where the problem was. So I didn't want to bring back the double crochet into that very first one because it sort of pushed out that row and it kind of gave me horrible edges. So I did my, I did maybe the third or fourth one in, I did an, an extra double crochet so that I wouldn't lose the, the um, I wouldn't lose the stitch. But um, I've since found out that there are videos that show you how to keep your stitch count on double crochet rows, but have a nice straight edge as well. So I'm gonna try and find where I saw that and link it down in the description box below. But uh, forgive me if it's not in there because I don't know what the name of the person was or that video that I watched, but it was a fantastic tutorial on how to keep your double crochets uh, nice and uh, flush, like uh, straight, uh, straight edges. God, I can't even talk today. So let's talk about the yarn that I used. In this blanket, because these uh, patches of, uh, of yarn that I chose look like camouflage, they kind of look like camo a little bit. I really like them and they're a duller color, whereas with the granny uh, stitch work here and the color work, the it's more chromatic, it's more shiny yarn. I do like the, the two uh, color, uh, two ways the yarns play with each other. So I'm kind of thinking of calling this blanket, this particular yarn choice is my camo chic. It's very, very camo chic. So the main body colors were made up of hobium yarns, which I got before they went on a little break and now they're back again. So you can actually get these. It's Utopia Baby. And it's a mal yarn, uh, yarn, which means the two strands of different colors are kind of twisted together. And in actual fact, these are several strands. They're, uh, when you kind of separate them, you see that there's probably seven different fibers, uh, strands that uh, make up the one, the yarn, the, the thread. So uh, yeah, so this ultramarine blue color is D3532. 100% acrylic and this one the teal color number is D3533 Now the granny stitch uh, uses a series of uh, three different um, Colorways so all in all this blanket uses five different colorways So those are the from hobium yarns were the first two and then I used these two yarns that I got from lovecraft.com. This one is Cascade Yarns Pinwheel, 100% acrylic in the color 27. And it's a shinier, metallic-y kind of looking yarn. And it's honey, browns, and golds. Absolutely love that. Uh, this is also a Lovecraft.com purchase from Cascades Yarn, Bentley. And the color number is 07. And this one here is a mix of acrylic and then superwash wool. So 75% acrylic and 25% superwash wool. Now I can throw this whole blanket into the, the washing machine, which is excellent. That's what I wanted to do. I also have this in the uh, blanket as well, in the color work section and in the granny stitch section as well. And this one is from Hobium, hobium.com. And it's called Cashmere Gold and it's from their collection, which is Madame Tricot, Tricot Paris. 
This one is a wall blend, but it actually is machine washable, which is wonderful. Wonderful. What do we have here in this blend? It is uh, 55 wool, 40 acrylic, and 5% cashmere. So yeah, I held double double strands of this because it is a, uh, I want to say it's a DK weight, whereas the other ones are worsted for. So that's the five color, colors of this blanket, which I shall call Camo Chic. Oh, there we go. That was like a bit of a pain there. So the next finished object that I have for you is... I showcased in my previous video a pattern that I got for, gifted to me with a couple of skeins and the uh, knitting needles as well as the, I don't know what these are called, I keep forgetting the word for them, stitch holders? Stitch holders. So hubby, uh, as I said in the previous video, hubby uh, is one of his uh, colleagues, work colleagues, uh, has, well, she has an elderly uh, mother who used to love knitting and she no longer can do it apparently because uh, she either doesn't have her de dexterity in her hands, but uh, she gifted me um, this pattern called Stay Put Scarf. And she asked me to uh, work up a series of them for her. And this one is in the colorway Skylight from Michael's Loops and Threads Impeccable collection that they have. And it's kind of blowing out. I guess it's such a light color, but it's, uh, it's almost white with just a touch of color in it. So I'm going to link this pattern down below in the description box. It is a paid pattern, so I can't give you too much of the details or talk about it, but I can tell you that it's uh, created by Phil Phil Comfy Cozy Hand Knits. Phil being spelled P-H-Y-L, P-H-I-L. So Phil Phil. And so I'm really enjoying that and I'm sure she got her, her previous one that I finished and she sent me a photograph with her wearing it. So I absolutely uh, felt that that was such a precious thing that she loved. So I'm doing the, the next two, the, uh, the next one will be a different color. So that's the final one. The other thing that I'm gonna show you is uh, a finished item that I am submitting into the Block Party Cal 2020, which is hosted by Deb, the Canadian Crutcheter. So here we have five blocks that I've made into a basket. And in the basket, it's holding all of my off cuts, all of my loose ends and some skeins of, of yarn as well. And it's not the most sturdiest of baskets, but it is holding its shape and doing its job. So I'm very happy about this project. So that one's finished. And I really like the toggles and faux fur. Just a really nice, neat way of finishing the edging. Uh, so that one's going to go into the Block Party Cow competition. Uh, so... I have a few extra panels that I've made up just to show you that they were originally blocks because this is what I made a few extra and I sewed them together in a cube form and put a base on it yeah and what I had used for this particular block was Karen Kindness which is a hundred percent polyester in the colorway Cobble Varge and Stitch Studio by Nicole, which is an A. Seymour brand. And uh, that colorway is called Cream Spec, and that's 
sorry, it's 97% acrylic and 3% viscose. So it's got some flex on it. I trimmed it with faux fur, which is, the brand is called Fur. Can you see that? It's really blowing out. There we go. The brand is called Fur and I got this from Michaels and it's a loops and thread and it's 100% polyester. So really, really love that little basket. It's so such a treat to do something um, more decor based. I also completed a little phone pouch in crochet. So it has a little flappy bit that um, buttons up to close it. Where's my phone? Here it is. So the phone can go in there boop, and buttons up. Now I had made these pouch, uh, this pouch, particular pouch to put on the blanket. So when you're watching your favorite television show or cheering on your football team, um, I was thinking of putting this to the blanket and you could uh, put in the remote control for the television or your phone or if you were just relaxing and you wanted to put your phone and have your headset or your headset jacked in and um, wearing them to listen to music while you're relaxing, um, this would be attached to the blanket. But the, as I said to you before, the blanket um, fabric itself was way too stretchy and bouncy and this was dragging on the fabric. So, and it's not a very heavy piece uh, that I wanted to attach. So it just gives you an indication on how stretchy that blanket was, or is, I should say. So that's uh, a tutorial that I did. I'll link the tutorial down below in the description box. And just to give you a bit of a background on the tutorial, it's from a channel called Nas uh, Nastasia. And the host of Nastasia is Donna Wolf. And the tutorial is called the chromatic phone case. So how to crochet a chromatic phone case. Um, and I believe that is all of my finished items. There is quickly one thing that I'm working on that I'd love to share with you. And this is the last thing. Uh, that I'll be recording in this uh, podcast and a while back you helped me choose a colorway for the block party uh, Cal 2020 and this is the choice of one of the Hanks that I, I have wound up and I have started that project so I'll show you it's a knitted one so here we have the start of it and it's not as I thought it would be. I thought it would be like uh, stripes of colour, but it's coming out more, um, let me think of the words, like a, it's almost like camo as well. So it's a hodgepodge of different splotches of the, of the colour work. This is the reverse side. So what I'm doing with this is I'm creating a shawl or a wrap, like a very, this is how, how um, long it's gonna be. The wrap is probably, what would that be? Two feet, almost two feet in, in length. And then I'm just gonna grow it out this way for as long as I can with that, with that and the other hank. So yeah, I am working up uh, what I'm calling my ridge it's like a ribbing, sorry, it's a ribbing on the bias. So normally when you rib, you do, you stack your pearls and your, uh, your pearls and your uh, knits on top of each other. And you might do ribbing like four by four or two by two. Anyway, this is ribbing on the bias. So I am doing ribbing where it's not sitting directly on top of each other, it's going slowly in one direction. So I'm doing it on the bias, and then when I get to a certain point, I'm gonna change the bias and go that way. So I'm gonna get zigzaggy ribbing um, throughout the, the piece. And I'm not following a pattern, I'm just sort of 
uh, testing out and playing around with stitches and you can kind of see it on both sides this is the indent it's kind of giving me angles and this is the where it's uh, raised so the right side wrong side looks a little different and that's about all I have for you today I hope you enjoyed that and if you have any comments or questions please uh, you know add them to this video I'd love to read them and if you're new to this video and found something of interest please uh, subscribe and like the video uh, thanks for sharing and I will see you in the next video bye for now